Let's try our hand at a jungle antenna. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Interestingly enough, the jungle antenna is one of the first antennas that I built after getting my license. They are ridiculously simple and a fantastic antenna for someone that just got their tech license. I had actually forgotten about the jungle antenna until I saw Gaston do a recent video on one. Now the one I built several years ago was the traditional one that had the three uh, counterpoise wires coming off of the bottom. I found it interesting though watching his video that he did it with only two counterpoise wires. So that's what I want to attempt today. Let's see if we can put one of these jungle antennas together, use two counterpoise wires, and get that thing resonant somewhere around 146.52 because these are cool little antennas. Not only are they really, really simple to build, they're fairly inexpensive to build, probably less than 20 bucks. It only is going to take you maybe an hour from start to finish, and the entire thing with coax will only weigh about three and a half ounces when you're done. Well, depending on which coax you're using, but we'll take a look at what I'm choosing to use with mine as we get into this video. All right, let's get over to the workbench and get this thing put together. Okay, so here on the workbench, we basically have everything we're going to need to build this. I'm actually going to be using the Leatherman Wave today just because I want to see how easy this would be to build in the field if this was the only tool I had with me. In addition to that, we've got a couple of ring terminals. We've got around seven feet of wire. We've got the BNC to banana plug adapter here and we've got a measuring device. So to get started, I'm just going to clear most of this out of the way, and we're going to take the wire and go ahead and stretch that out. Now, before we make any cuts, we need to determine how long our wire needs to be. So let's take 234 and divide that by 146.520, which is the frequency I want the antenna to be resonant on. We'll go ahead and press equals, and that gives us 1.59. Now, to get that in inches, let's multiply that by 12, and we get 19.16. We're going to use 19 inches because, in my experience, these calculations come out just a little bit long for this particular antenna. So, with that wire in hand, now I didn't make a cut on it yet. It is still the full 7 feet of length. I am going to make a figure eight knot here on the end. And the reason we're doing that is this is going to give me a loop once this is complete that I can hang this antenna to. Once we've got that knot in the end of the wire, I'm gonna line up the knot with the end of the tape measure over here, and we're going to pull out 19 inches. We'll go ahead and mark that and make the cut. And then we're going to repeat that same process two more times. So line up the knot with the end of the tape, pull out 19 inches, mark it, and cut it. Now that we've got all three pieces of wire uh, cut to the proper length, we're going to use the Leatherman tool. And I'm just using this little V-notch right here. Of course, use regular wire strippers if you prefer. But I'm going to use this to go ahead and strip back a piece of that wire. Now that we've got the wire stripped back, uh, I'm going to take two of those pieces and twist that together. Now, if you're making the version of this antenna that has three legs on it, obviously you would want to have all three of those right here. This is going to be the ground side of that antenna. So in my case, I'm just going to make the version that's got two legs on it for the counterpoise or for the ground side of the antenna. And we'll go ahead and crimp on the ring terminal. So I've got that lined up in the Leatherman so that I can crimp that. Again, if you've got regular crimpers, obviously use those. This is just kind of a test for me to see that this could be done in the field with just a single tool. That 
that crimp came out looking good now if you wanted to you could go ahead and solder this as well i'm not going to right at this minute but i'll probably come back and solder this just to give it a little bit stronger connection but this would pass in the field to get a quick antenna up and in the air let's go ahead and do the single piece of wire that will be coming off of the center of our coax that will be our primary radiating element. Now that we have both of our ring terminals on, this one is the single wire, this is the double over here. We're going to attach the single wire piece to the red side and the double piece to the black side. Now, notice that I did orientate these opposite of one another. So, one ring terminal is uh, facing that way, or the wire is facing that way. The other one is facing this way. That way, when we hang it and we're pulling on this one, the other one is hanging straight down, minus a little bit of uh, bend that we'll get when attaching the coax. Now, we just need to get this on an antenna analyzer and see where it's actually resonant at. I've got a feeling it's going to be way too long, but let's go ahead and double check that next. And it is an absolutely wet and miserable day here in Tennessee. So what I've done is kind of improvised here. I've used a ruler that had this slot in it and a couple of these metal clips, these carabiners, and attached the wire to each side. So normally this would be made up of a stick that you picked up from the outdoors. But in this case, we're just going to use this. Just something to spread the legs on that counterpoise. Let's go ahead and get this hanging up and put it on that analyzer. Now, for this test here, I'm using RG174, and you might ask why, because that's a pretty lossy coax when we're talking about UHF and VHF. Uh, this is only 15 feet long, so I'm trying to limit the loss as much as possible, but I want a super compact piece of coax to keep in the kit. This is also BNC on both ends, so this fits nicely with the HTs since I've got BNC adapters on all of my HTs. So a quick and easy method to swap out the normal 19 inch whip antenna and go ahead and put this in the air instead. Now you can see at 146.5 we've got a 2.9 to 1 SWR. So definitely not great and kind of like I expected. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to be long. Let's take a look at another measurement here. And yes, you can see that we are too long. So it looks like I've got 1.16 to 1 at 108.5. So I'm going to have to take off quite a bit of this antenna. So I'm going to go ahead and take that down and start trimming that up to see if we can get this resonant in the area of the band where we want it. So I've taken the knot out of the end of the wire and I'm going to cut off about 2 inch. And I'm going to do that for all three pieces of wire on this antenna. Once I've made my cut, I'll go ahead and tie that knot back in the end so that I can hang it back up. And as you can see, we've come up a little bit in frequency to 122.5, but still not enough. So I'm going to take the antenna back down and trim off a couple of more inches. And after cutting a couple more inches, you can see that it's still not where we need it. So we're going to take it back down and cut a little more. I've got uh, 1.21 to 1 at roughly 140. And I'm actually going to leave it right here until I can get outside and test this thing in open space. I've kind of got a feeling that I'm getting a little bit of interference from things in my shack. So I just don't want to trim any more until I can get outside on a pretty day and finish this up. All right, so as you can see, the SWR looks pretty good at 146, so no complaints there. Let's take a look. Let's see if I can do this on camera while holding the camera with one hand and the uh, analyzer with the other. Let's try the multi and let it scan, and let's see if we get uh, anything on 440 with this as well. So it looks like 145.79, we get 1.07. Can't complain about that. And on 70 centimeters, it looks like we've got 1.51 to 1 at 439.7. So not ideal for 70 centimeters, but uh, don't think you can argue with those two meter numbers right there. So there's a look at the jungle antenna. I told you guys it was going to be super easy to build. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.